Welcome to this new Insider Code video where we will see the importance of knowing properties. What are properties? Properties are the things that characterize something. For example, if we take a binary search tree, we can say that its properties are all nodes on the left subtree are smaller than the root, all nodes on the right subtree are greater than the root, subtrees of a BST are also binary search trees, performing an in-order traversal on a BST gives sorted values, we can insert delete search nodes in O of H some complexity, where H is the height of the BST, etc, etc. And knowing the properties of elements you're dealing with in a coding problem is very very important and by doing so you'll be more likely to fully understand the problem, to find an efficient solution and to analyze its time and space complexity. Let me give you three examples. We have a string str and we want to check if we can rearrange its characters to make a palindrome. A palindrome is a string that reads the same back and forth, like the word race car. For example, if we have the string a b b c a b b b b, we can rearrange its characters and make the palindrome b a b b c b b a b. If we don't know palindrome properties, we may think of generating all permutations of SCR and check if one of them is a palindrome. The solution works, but it's very very inefficient. We'd get a time complexity of O of n times n factorial, where n is the length of SCR. But we can do it in linear time by using the property that says that in a palindrome, every character appears an even number of times except maybe one character that is allowed to appear an odd number of times. For example in SCR, A appears twice, even, B appears four times, even, and C appears once, odd, but it's not a problem. In Briaf, the number of characters that appear an odd number of times must not exceed one, and this is what we will check by using a hash table. We create a counter, then for each character in SCR we increment its number of occurrences by 1. Now that we got a hash map that contains the number of occurrences of each character, we get the ones that have an odd number of occurrences and we check that there is at most one of them. This algorithm has an O of n time complexity, so we could check if a string can be a palindrome in linear time. Second example, we have a singly linked list LL and we want to reverse it. We may think of reversing it like we would reverse an array, we put two pointers left and right and we keep swapping the values until they meet in the middle. But one property of singly linked list is that we can't walk backwards, so we can't move right pointer to the previous node. And if we decide to always restart from the beginning and go to the opposite index of left, we'd end up with O of n square time complexity, which is inefficient for this problem. So what we can do is just to put three pointers previous, current, and next, and we keep modifying links. We get an O of n time complexity. Before moving to the third example, please take some seconds to like the video and to subscribe to the channel. Around 75% of the views are from non-subscribers, we have to fix this. Ok now third example, we have a string str and we want to count all the possible distinct permutations that we can make. For example, if we have the string aaabb, we can make 10 of them, here are them. The brute force solution to this problem is to generate all the possible permutations, remove duplicates by putting them in a set and return the length. But there is a property with permutations that says that with n non-distant elements to get the number of possible permutations, we calculate n factorial divided by the product of factorials of the number of occurrences of each element. For example here the string has 5 characters, we have 3 occurrences of A and 2 occurrences of B. So the number of possible permutations is 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 2 factorial, which gives 120 divided by 12, which gives 10. So the algorithm of this solution is that we count occurrences of each element by using a hash table, we calculate their factorial, we calculate the product, and we divide n factorial by that product. We get a linear time complexity. From these three examples, we can say that knowing properties is very important in coding problems because it gives you the ability to understand the elements you're dealing with, to avoid brute force solutions, and to analyze the time and space complexity of your solution. Before ending this video, let me tell you that if you want to become better in algorithms, their structures, complexity analysis, and problem solving, you can take the 50 popular coding interview problems inside code course. It covers very interesting and well-known coding problems like longest common subsequence, lowest common ancestor, 01 knapsack, and 47 other ones. 
And the lecture doesn't contain videos only. It contains the problem description, a compiler to test your solution in different test cases in four programming languages, a video where I explain the different solutions, time and space complexity analysis, solution code, and you can even ask me questions if you don't understand something. So if you like the style of my videos and want to improve your skills, then this course is for you. The link is in the description. We reached the end of this video, I hope that you enjoyed it, please tell me what you thought about it in comments and see you in the next one.